You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. This is the feature article of our program, and our topic is and has been Dave Hunt's book, When Will Jesus Come?, subtitled Compelling Evidence for the Soon Return of Christ. And if you have a copy and want to follow along with our discussion, we're beginning chapter 14 titled An Incredible Growing Delusion. Now, Dave, you open this chapter by quoting scriptures from Luke that indicate the condition on earth at the time of the rapture. Let me read those. This will begin with Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, that is Noah, so it shall be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Uh, Luke 21, I'll read verses 34 to 36. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, that is, excessiveness, and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, Dave, in these verses, you say we have a powerful case for a pre-tribulation rapture. How so? Well, obviously, uh, these verses are taken from two different chapters, mm -hmm. and there's quite a contrast. Um, we don't. Uh, you're reading from what I quoted at the beginning, beginning of the, from what I quoted at the beginning of the chapter, and in the first one, uh, thus shall it be in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Uh, now, revealed to whom? not to the whole world, revealed to his own. Uh, how do we know this is the rapture in contrast to the other one? The other one is talking about uh, horrible conditions, uh, trials, tribulations, destruction, great uh, destruction coming upon the earth. And so they're hoping that they will be delivered, counted worthy, and not to partake in that. And this will come like a snare on the whole earth. But the first one, it says they're buying and selling and building and planting and part, you know, partying and marrying and eating and drinking and and uh, you cannot imagine that at the end of the great tribulation the world is practically destroyed and but yet this is a time when the Son of Man will be revealed, uh, revealed how and to whom, obviously to his own. He said he would come and take them. Uh, to his father's house in many mansions. Mm -hmm. So there is no... Po this has to be the rapture. Uh, for example, uh, it says that uh, the day that Lot departed from Sodom, fire and brimstone came upon him. It's a picture of the rapture. We leave. Christ takes his bride out of this uh, earth and uh, then God's judgment begins to come. And he said he would spare us from his wrath. Mm -hmm. Dave, so the, uh, the second, this can't be talking about the second coming. All we have to do is look to uh, Revelation 19 and even uh, verses before that. But life is not normal at the second coming, right? There's <laughs> famine. There's no eating and drinking and partying, right? A third of the trees are burned up. A third of the ocean turns to blood. A third of the waters are poisonous. That's way back in chapter 6 yeah. of, 
Well, buying and selling, planting, building not yeah. normal. I mean, that's not going to take place. And as you said, over a billion people die. And in chapter 6 of Revelation, it talks about everyone on earth attempting to hide from God. Right. So I don't know what these people can say about this, you know, post-tribbers. Now, the reason I quoted uh, Luke um, 17 is because if you go to Matthew 24, mm -hmm. it gives you pretty much the same words, except it says, and the flood came and took them all away. So they say, see, they're not being taken away to heaven. They're being taken away to judgment. Two will be sleeping in a bed. One's taking the other left. Two grinding in the mill. One taking the other left. Two working the field and so forth. By the way, that's an indication that the world was round. You wouldn't have people sleeping and also working in the field and grinding in the mill uh, at the same time. Uh, so these are different uh, time zones that the Lord is, is referring to. But how are you going to explain that? Well, they say, well, they're taken away to judgment. What judgment is this? I don't know what judgment that would be. The only judgment I read of it is he gathers the nations together that's in chapter 25, Matthew 25. And he, before him, and he separates the sheep from the goats. There's nothing about snatching people out of beds and out of fields and, and others are, are left. Uh, you, you can't correlate that further. So I go to uh, Luke because there it doesn't say that uh, the flood came and took them away. It says Lot was taken out and the judgment, judgment came. Now, it says, thus will it be in the day that the Son of Man appears. Well, it's nothing about judgment. Uh, and furthermore, uh, as, as you said, Tom, you, the only way you can make it a judgment, you have to put it at the end of the Great Tribulation. But that does not fit with the conditions. You know, it's interesting that uh, when it says, as it was in the days of Noah, uh, so shall it be, as it was in the days of Lot and so forth. We know if you said, if you ask someone, what about the days of Noah? What about the days of Lot? The first thing that would come to their mind is the wickedness, the evil, uh, violence, and so forth. This is what the scripture tells us in, back in Genesis 6 and, and when it's talking about uh, the days of Noah. But that's not what Jesus mentions. He's not commenting about the evil at all. He's talking about the prosperity. The last thing they had in mind was judgment. Never had judgment from God. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus is emphasizing. They're eating and drinking and buying and selling. They're partying and planting and building. Uh, no judgment is expected. Tom, you could not possibly put that at the end of the Great Tribulation, as you have pointed out. I mean, what else would there be? They've had nothing but God's wrath poured out upon this earth and all the plagues and, and so forth. And the world is terrified. And this is the condition upon this earth? No, couldn't possibly be. There are two appearings, therefore, of Christ. The one is in John, 1 John chapter 3. Uh, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone that hath this hope in him purifies himself. So this, this is an appearing that is going to transform the believers. He will appear to his own, and when we see him, we will be transformed into his likeness. Now, we know that happens at the resurrection. Uh, it's the only time it could and along with the resurrection, is the rapture. But there's another appearing, and we read of it in other places. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Every eye shall see him, and they also who pierced him. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll-free at our order number, or visit our website 